Oh, suddenly it's kind of dark out here. It's almost a half light. Good morning, children. Good morning, kiddos. A blessed Easter to you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. So do you know who I am? Do you know who this is? You can't see me. Do you know who I am? Yes. Yes, you are right. It's Pastor Rod. Good morning. It's great to be with you today. And I pray that uh, you are well on this Easter Sunday. But how did you know it was me? How did you know that it was me who was speaking to you? Oh, you heard my voice, didn't you? And when you heard my voice, you recognized me. Well, that is just awesome. I bet that I could recognize your voice, too, if, I, if and when I hear it. So in John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. Those who hear my voice, follow me. Um, they know me and follow me, Jesus says. Well, in today's Gospel that I'm going to read in just a moment, Mary, Mary Magdalene, a disciple of Jesus, hears his voice on that first Easter morning uh, when he says her name. He says to her, Mary. And she turns, and that's when she recognizes him. When she hears his voice, when he calls her name, she turns and says to him, Rabunai, which means teacher. And it's just a beautiful moment in the Gospel that, that, that plays out this promise that Jesus says in chapter 10, uh, I am the Good Shepherd. Those who hear my voice, they know me and follow me. Well, Jesus knows your name too today. And uh, Jesus has known you before you were born. Uh, we're told in Psalm 139 that he knew you before you were born when you were being knit together in your mother's womb. And so Jesus has known you for a long time. He has known your name. So when you, like Mary, find yourself in... Uh, in the dark or in a half-lit morning and you're, you're afraid or confused or uh, worried, you can call on Jesus. Uh, he knows your name. Uh, he, he hears your voice. He hears your prayers. And he says to you, come and follow me. And he takes care of you. He will lead you through any dark valley. He will lead you through uh, any time of trial or struggle. He is your Good Shepherd. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for your uh, resurrection and new life, uh, for overcoming death and the grave, the most scariest uh, thing that we can think of in this world. Bless our children today. Bless them with hope and joy and uh, freedom and abundance in you as they know you, you and know your name knowing that you know them. Just bless them, fill them with goodness, and let your resurrection morning uh, be upon them, uh, even in a way that, that they have not expected, in a way of surprise and joy and delight. Fill all of your children with that same sense of goodness and delight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled, removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw that the linen wrappings were lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw, and he believed.
For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one on the head and one at the one and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary came to the tomb the day following her Sabbath. She came while it was still dark. It seems that in the chaos of those early morning hours, as Mary arrived, she saw and saw the tomb open as Peter and the other disciple came, looked in, went in, saw and believed, and went home. As Mary lingered, so it seems did the darkness that morning. Normally, we as a church celebrate Easter, proclaiming the victory of the day overnight, proclaiming the victory of life over death and the victory of light over darkness. And nothing has changed in that regard. We too know the tomb is empty. We too proclaim Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we will again this year make that proclamation, that declaration. And we believe it. We trust it. We hold on to it. Even in the darkness. But this year, I have to say that I'm, I'm struck and I'm stuck on the words that John uses to describe the chaos of the early morning hours while it was still dark. Easter, it seems, begins in the darkness, the fact that we may have overlooked in years past. Peter and the other disciples had to enter the tomb before they could come out again. Mary took a second look, staring death in the face. She lingered in that place of death, that place of grief and sorrow, vulnerable, uncomfortable. And there, and there she bumped into Jesus. Easter, it seems, begins in the darkness. And we find ourselves in a bit of that darkness this year. We find ourselves uh, this year as we gather for Easter, we, we find ourselves with the darkness as our only companion, companion, with the darkness that continues to linger. It is an all too familiar place for many in our society, in our culture, and in our world. A place that is all too familiar on an all too regular basis. They are the poor, the overlooked, the unemployed and underemployed, those who are disenfranchised from the normal, bustling, thriving and growing economy that most of us and many of us enjoy. 
those living under a bridge, those living under the suffocating reality of a terminal illness, those grieving and longing for a loved one who has died, those living with violence, abuse, and harm to themselves, those locked in the many, in the many war, war-torn zones throughout our world today, living isolated, alone, afraid, and powerless. Those who are aging and losing their faculties and their independence. We find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic with the darkness lingering as we are locked in our homes, isolated, watching life go by. Life that's out of our control. Life lived when we don't know how the story will end. It's a strange place to begin to begin Easter with the lingering darkness. In the midst of the darkness, Mary wept. Literally, we're told, she lamented. She cried out to God. Out of her broken heart, she cried out to God. Out of her disappointment, her pain, her trauma, and her loss, she sought God's ear in her loneliness, in her fear, in her powerlessness, in that place of vulnerability. She lingered in the darkness, and there, there she bumped into Jesus. We linger here with Mary this morning in the half light, waiting for the sun to rise. As Nadia Bolt Weber, Weber puts it, Mary remains present. She remains present in the half light lit morning to what is real, to what is actually happening. She does so even when that is when that when what is real feels unbearable. Our Lenten theme this year is awaken, telling your God story. In my own life, in my own life, I know that it's true that clarity, hope, and healing, that new life has come when I was willing to linger in the darkness. When I was willing to linger in places where the usual platitudes fell flat and all the easy answers proved inadequate, Jesus comes even as the darkness lingers. And sometimes, sometimes it has taken a long time to recognize him. He doesn't look the way that I expect him to look. He doesn't let me cling to the old, to my old ideas. He disappears again just as I grab hold of him. But he comes. He calls my name. And in that instant, I recognize myself and him. Throughout the centuries, many like Mary, mothers and fathers, grandpas and grandmas, husbands and wives, children and brothers and sisters, all who experience pain, disappointment, trauma and loss, loneliness, fear and powerlessness, have over and over again found hope in the darkness as their lives have bumped into Jesus. The in inexplicable, perfectly wonderful love of God. In a beautiful essay on the resurrection, theologian and writer Chris Barnes uh, reminds us of what actually matters during this Holy Week. The question that Easter asks us is not, 
Do we believe in the doctrine of the resurrection? Frankly, that is not uh, particularly hard, he writes. What the gospel asks is not do you believe, but have you encountered the risen Christ? Have you bumped into Jesus? What I see in the resurrection narratives are individual people having profoundly individual encounters with Jesus Christ while in the darkness, while lingering there in the half-light. The encounters don't look identical. When Peter sees the empty tomb, he runs away. When the beloved disciples disciple sees it, he believes without comprehension. When Mary sees it, she weeps and waits for more. Dear friends, the author of Psalm 30, in that psalm the poet declares, Weeping, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is not an easy fought battle. It is a hard fought battle, and oftentimes the morning is long in coming. But dear friends, life, our life, has been changed. This Easter is strange. Even though we're together, we're alone, we're lingering in the darkness, separate and distant from one another. Let us linger. Let us linger here a while, even though it's uncomfortable. Let us linger here a while, trusting, hoping, and praying that the sun will rise, that the light will dawn. We know that the tomb is empty, that the tomb is open. We know that Jesus is alive, that he is risen. May we, in this lingering darkness, May we bump in to Jesus, the author and giver of life, who comes to wipe away our tears, who comes to bless us with his presence, who comes to call us by name, who comes to give us life. Dear friends, let us linger in the darkness, in the half-light. Let us linger there until we bump into Jesus and find life in his name. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Hmm. I was hoping for a sunny morning, but we're not going to get it. <laughs>